Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the install and setup of Maverick's server. Now I've already done a uh, tutorial on how to upgrade for those of you that have already uh, had server running and you've wanted to go through the upgrade process. And so you can see my other tutorial on that. Uh, but today what I thought I'd do is talk about how do you set up server uh, with a fresh install. So you're starting at the beginning. Now for those of you that may still be running Mountain Lion, you're going to want to update to Mavericks. And so I've done uh, a couple of tutorials on that. I've done one on how to do the upgrade to Mavericks, as well as one on how to do a clean install of Mavericks if you just want to start all over. And so uh, you can reference those uh, on my channel and maybe take a look at those first before you get to this part. Uh, but as we get started with server, uh, I'm going to assume there might be some of you out there that are just checking this out because you wonder if you actually need a server or not. So I thought I'd go over that and then show you how the setup works. And I thought I'd start right here on Apple's own uh, server page just to give you uh, an idea of some of the things you can do with server because uh, I think they lay them out here and it's good to take a look at. Uh, the first thing you would use a server for would obviously be file sharing. And so what this allows you to do uh, with a server is you can set up certain files that you can share, uh, not only within uh, your household, but depending on how you have your server set up, you could share those remotely. So that if you've got uh, files and things you want to access, but you don't want to put them in the cloud or put them on a Dropbox or something like that, uh, you could actually just uh, you know connect those files and things that you want to share uh, remotely and have all of the files that are on your server available to your mobile devices or, or available in another location as well. Uh, another advantage is Profile Manager which basically allows you to uh, put all the settings together for all of your different devices, iOS or Mac, and be able to do that from a web interface. And so you can basically make those adjustments anywhere, and it'll push those changes to all your devices. Uh, this comes in really handy, uh, especially if you've got uh, maybe kids in the household or somebody where you want to uh, be able to uh, you know, set the settings on their computer, and you don't, you don't always have access to their computer to do that. Well, this allows you to do that remotely, uh, so you can manage all those settings. Uh, there's also a caching server which allows you to download your updates once and then all of your computers will go to your server for their updates which will save uh, your bandwidth and especially if you got slow download speeds it would speed that up. Let me just skip Xcode here. Uh, the other advantage is time machine backups that you'd be able to back up all of the computers in your household uh, wirelessly. Uh, you can also do it wired if you're wired into your Ethernet but you can back those uh, all of those computers up and have time machine backups happening all the time as people are using their backups. And so that's a, that's a great advantage as opposed to having to have a drive plugged into your computer. This way, uh, everybody accesses the server to make that work. Uh, there's also a built-in wiki server, which allows you to have your own website uh, that you can use, uh, both inside and outside the house, depending on how your server's set up. And then you can also basically run your own mini iCloud with calendar contacts and, in some cases, mail servers. Uh, and all of those things will send push notifications and keep all of your iOS devices and everything up to date as well. So uh, there are quite a few uh, different services uh, and things available. Those are just a few reasons why you might uh, want to have a server. Uh, it also allows you uh, to have uh, users have their home folders on your server, which means that they can log into any computer on your network and uh, have their home folder and their desktop come up so that there's no, uh, there's no waiting for the computer to get to your specific settings. You can just log into any computer uh, on your network and make that work. So there are some advantages uh, to running server. Now, a uh, question comes up, uh, what should I do to run server? Uh, now, Apple basically right now uh, says the Mac Mini is probably the best thing to run as a server. And I would tend to agree with that because of its low power uh, footprint. And a server really is just something that uh, you want to hook up and have run and uh, kind of put away and forget about it. And so uh, the Mini really is great uh, for that for space. That's what I run myself. Now, you can run a server on uh, any Mac that fits the uh, various tech specs, again, that you're running Mavericks, you got two gigs of memory and 10 gigs of uh, disk space. Uh, so if you've got those requirements uh, met, you can run server on any of those devices. Uh, but I would recommend it running on a computer that you're not going to move around or turn off because you want to be able to leave a server on. And that's why I'd go with the Mac Mini. All right, so that just gives you an overview of uh, server generally and why you might want to use it. So now let's, uh, let's go over to the Mac App Store and let's start our uh, process of upgrading to server. 
Uh, here's server on the Mac App Store. It's uh, only $20, and there's no limits on it. So this is uh, an industrial uh, level uh, server, so to speak, in that there's not a limit on the number of users or anything like that. Uh, so it really is a, uh, a great bargain uh, for what you get out of it. A couple of things uh, before you get started. Uh, there are a few uh, you know, bugs initially in server, just like there are kind of in any uh, uh, new updates. And so VPN uh, is having some issues, I know, and there's a couple other little things. So just want to warn you of that before you get started. If you're someone that is really concerned about that, you might want to wait for the next uh, point release uh, before you install. But uh, otherwise, uh, it seems like things are running pretty well. So I'm going to do the install and uh, show you the process here. So let's go ahead and start it. Now, just so you know, what server does is server is going, let me just click install. Server is basically going to add server components to your Mavericks install. That's what, it's, that's what it actually does. Uh, so you can uninstall it later, and I'll cover how to do that. But let me just uh, install server here. And once that's done, I'll come back and show you the setup process. Okay, as you can see, uh, it says now that I've installed OS X Server. So let me just put this down here. And let's go to Launchpad. And you can see there's Server sitting right there. So let's click that to launch into it. And so this is the Server uh, setup screen right here. And so basically it just tells you to set up Server on this Mac. You need to click Continue. Uh, you can uh, install Server uh, remotely if you're networked together. That's why they have this other Mac over here where you can select the Mac. But since we're going to do it right here on this computer, we're going to click uh, Continue. Now it's going to ask us to agree to the software licensing agreement. We'll click Agree. And then it asks us to uh, authenticate with our administrator username and password. So let me do that. Okay, so now I've put my credentials in there. I'm just going to click uh, Allow. And so now it's going to start the uh, server process. So it's going to uh, collect all the information. It's going to uh, configure the services, start to create the information here for me. And it's setting up all of the different components that I need to run server. So I'm going to let it uh, go through its process of preparing all of the processes uh, that it needs to set up. And then we'll come back and start the, uh, the setup process. Okay, once the install is done, we're greeted with this uh, server tutorial screen here. And this is a nice addition that they've put into Maverick's server. Uh, before, there used to be a drop-down drawer uh, in the server interface itself, which would make some suggestions on things to do with some links to uh, the different areas to make those changes happen. Uh, but this time, they've put together uh, actually a pretty nice uh, little tutorial uh, section to get you set up on how to get started with server. You can see here, like if I just click on Share Files, uh, what it'll do is it, uh, it'll bring up a, an interface here that just kind of walks you through what, what file sharing is, how to set that up before you begin. It walks you through all of the different uh, ways to set it up with screenshots and uh, little arrows uh, that really just, you know, walk you through how to get this uh, set up and started the first time. And there's a couple of lessons underneath there, uh, how to get it uh, set up on your iOS devices. Uh, it's really nice. You can see it's got, uh, you know, the caching app, the centralized backup, collaboration, managing your devices, uh, hosting a website, all of those things, uh, you know, configure for public access, uh, which basically uh, kind of walks you through configuring VPN access, what you need to do with your host name, uh, and all those kinds of things. So uh, again, it's a nice addition uh, for those that like, that like to just kind of go through these screenshots like this uh, and just kind of follow directions and set it up. Uh, it does a, does a pretty nice job. So that's an addition that they have. Now as a result of that, let me just put this down for a second. When you launch into the server app for the very first time, uh, it just assumes that you want to uh, use this as a local file share server. You can see it, it just says my host name as server.local. Uh, which basically just means this is just my local machine name that's already there. Nothing's configured or set up. You can see uh, services that are on have the green dot. So the only service they set up was file sharing. Uh, you can see if I just click show down here, there's an advanced area. You can see that DNS itself, if I just click that, is empty. Uh, none of that is set up. Uh, again, I'm going to talk about this in, in depth on how to set up DNS, but DNS is basically what allows you uh, to um, you know, use your use your server to connect outside uh, your uh, local network. Uh, it also allows you to VPN, uh, depending on what your server name is, and those th those types of things. So, uh, again, when it when it launches for the first time, it's a pretty uh, wide open, uh, bare bones deal. Now, in previous, when you had Mountain Lion Server, uh, for those of you that had that, it would walk you through setting up DNS in the uh, setup wizard. Uh, but this time, it's uh, relying on the tutorials uh, to help you. 
uh, set up the things you want to set up based on what it is you want to do. So uh, a little different approach, uh, you know, a little bit more configuration, but I'll be doing all of these tutorials, walking you through all of these services to show you uh, just how to set those things up. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.